Hello everyone, Man of Interest here with This Week in Keyboards. Sorry for the delay, my XLR adapter cable for my mic died, had to wait for replacement. But hey, we're Gucci Gang now, and it's time for the news. We have a decent amount of topics to go over. Three primary topics and a score of rapid fire ones. Let's get to it. First up in the news, we have the Sagittarius by Gondolindrum. The Sagittarius is an ergonomic layout that is uh, quite interesting to be honest. I'm kind of a fan of what I'm seeing here so far. It's different and it could work. The main factors in designing this board were influenced by rehabilitative ergonomics and references a few papers, theses, and books about RSI, hand strain, finger rehab, and ergonomics, which cool. This is a particularly interesting layout and it's nice that it was created with compatibility for common key set uh, base kits in mind. The PCB will allow for up to four knobs on the side navigation keys as well as having two curved flexed cuts. This ergo board features a gasket mounted plate, via compatibility, USB-C port, and it'll be run by Canon keys. I think it's a pretty cool board and I'd really love to get my hands on this someday. No knobs or rotary encoders for me, but as someone who's tried the Ergodox, Kinesis Advantage, Microtron, VEA, and other cool and unique ergonomic keyboard styles, this whets my appetite. Also, my sign is a Sagittarius, so I mean, it, it, it has to happen, right? I'm a Sagittarius, the board's a Sagittarius. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I'm looking forward to it, Gondo. Looking forward to it. Our next topic is the Type K by Gawk 101. This keyboard is essentially a tented Alice. As the picture suggests, tenting is when both sides of the keyboard rise up toward the middle, allowing for a comfortable ergonomic setup that allows you to use your hands between horizontal and vertical. Many champion tented designs is one of the best for ergonomics, and personally, I think tented keyboards can work pretty well to help alleviate wrist strain. The Type K features a 5.5 degree typing angle, a 5 degree tenting angle, an aluminum top with a polycarbonate bottom, and a stainless steel weight. A top mounted plate and a VIA compatible PCB designed by Gondo is also going to be a part of the specs. Awesome. I love the big influence of VIA in this community and how it's going everywhere. It's absolutely A+. The Alice layout has definitely been very popular in the community and a tented version honestly sounds very amazing if you ask me. Since the board is tented, I'm curious to see the PCB, or possibly PCBs. As my guess is there will be a PCB on both sides joined together in the middle by a daughter board. In terms of looks, I think this keyboard has it, with that rear and bottom stainless steel weight, and that triangle geometry you see on the back side due to the tenting. Seeing the bottom and the back weight peek out on the sides is something we've seen in quite a few boards, and I think it looks pretty classy here. This may change how people feel about the looks of the board, but at least looking at that side picture, it does seem a bit of a, a bit of a chunk, but it is what it is and I think that's okay. Typing a Q6 though, with a tented board will be particularly interesting with both the polycar bottom and the extra space in the middle since it's going to be tented up. But I trust Gawk with this design and I'm looking forward to it as well. Oh man, we are two main topics in and future Huey's wallet is looking slimmer and slimmer already. Ooh-wee. The price is still TBD as well as the number of units available, but we know it will be sold as an in-stock keyboard by Deskeys. Wow-wee. In-stock, no waiting aside from the weight we have now. This is some exciting stuff. The last main topic we have today is a combo breaker because it isn't an Ergo board or an Alice style layout. No, it's the Vega by AIO3. The Vega is a gasket, seamless, screwless 65% keyboard. Um, AIO3 co-designed this with Kevin Plus of Deskeys, and it's definitely interesting having no visible exterior screws. The keyboard is of course still screwed together, but the screws are hidden under the keycaps for an uninterrupted minimal aesthetic. No screws are gonna screw up your view of this keyboard. The specifications of the Vega are as follows. It will weigh 1.4 kilograms, offer aluminum and polycarbonate as the options for the plate, have a typing angle of 6.5 degrees, and it'll be available in black, gray, e-white, blue, green, and rose gold. E-white, that's some pretty nice stuff. But choosing between e-white and rose gold, why you gotta do this to me, AIO3? Making me choose the tough choices like that. The 65% layout isn't anything super special, but why mess with what works? There will be a hot swap and soldered version of the PCB, which means this custom will be quite accessible and attractive 
for those without the means to solder nor the desire to have one of the builders in our community build it up for them. So I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in that alone. The colors look pretty good and based off the exploded view, I spy some foam I think between the plate and PCB as well as possibly some underneath the PCB. Speaking of the cutaway view, this is uh, certainly interesting in seeing how all the mounting kind of works together. Looks like the plate kind of tray mounts to the PCB as well as has a mounting between the piece below the PCB and the top of the case securing the whole keyboard together. While the weight on the bottom probably isn't anything to write home about, it's definitely AIO3's consistent branding and I don't know if I'll be getting this board, but it's definitely a very interesting 65%. I mean, come on, it uses 28 custom gaskets. Who else can brag about that? Well, you know what time it is. Rapid fire time. Today's rapid fire is brought to us by Kono.store. Over on Kono.store, you can check out the group buy for EPBT Ivory, which is running right now. Running until July 6th, this set was designed by Pak Risu and will support the nonprofit organization Save the Elephants, which is located in Kenya. Check out this set in the link down below in the description. Do, 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 do. Okay, you know what time it is? Rapid fire time. We have quite a few topics today, so let's get to it first up is the fluxon a qmk and via compatible vortex core replacement it's cool that an oem board is getting an upgrade that can bring it into the modern enthusiast world but uh i mean it's the vortex core who the heck even uses the vortex core next up we have the anubis which is a 60 percent with some uh interesting geometry to say the least certainly an interesting looking board but where are the higher up quarter angle shots of this board? I think the geometry of this board, it looks better on the back than the front, so. Eh, but the wind keyless option is, is, is pretty nifty, I suppose. The next rapid fire topic is, is the set SA8010, which will feature modifier legends and colors faithful to the uh, this data board that was modeled after, which is pretty cool. But obviously, unlike that board, it will have modern sensibilities in terms of compatibility. Pretty cool looking set and pretty cool board as inspiration. Hopefully there will be a normal kit without that alpha numpad colors in the middle for those who want a bit of a, that SA Triumph Adler-ish theme going on in their lives. This ain't, the set ain't a bad colorway in my opinion. Another tall boy set we have to talk about today are cat blanks. Currently running until July 3rd, these are simply blank white cat keycaps. In theory, this should be the fastest produced cat set ever. No legends to worry about. But based off Cat's current production timelines, it might be a very interesting snail's race between any of the Cat sets we've seen and the SAQ, which seems to be diminishing bit by bit. Moving on, we have the Cobra Kai desk pads. Cool enough, I guess, if you're a fan of uh, Cobra Kai and that whole show and stuff. I, I, I don't really know. Our next topic is a keyboard. It's the Pita 60, which is a custom keyboard for low profile switches. Here's the thing, I don't really know anyone as an enthusiast who uses low profile switches consistently, maybe aside from like people in the 40s community or people who build those small split boards, but I guess it's something that people can do. So here's the thing about this keyboard, it, I found it, you know, I found it uses TC, TTC low profile switches, which makes me think, whoa, I didn't even know those exist. Where the heck do you even get those switches? Well, if you know where you get those switches, maybe you'll care about this board. Another keyboard we have is the Alpine 60, featuring a nav key and arrow cluster combined, yet separated from the rest of the typing portion. Something about it just looks off to me for that layout, and I think the weight is uh, has a bit too much going on. It's gasket mounted though, since it's you know 2020, and gasket mounting seems as common as getting fries with your burger. So, yeah. Low contrast. Sometimes it works, but usually it doesn't so work so well especially with PBT. This next set is the ePBT Cabernet set, which is definitely uh, interesting. Typically dye sub colors don't have much pop as ABS colors, so there's gonna be a thin line to tread here for how it's gonna look. Personally, I think wine should go in my stomach, and if it's gonna be on my desk, it's in a wine glass, or if I'm, real, or if I'm feeling really cheap in a bag. GMK Moonlight is a key set that reminds me of kids saying the moon was made of cheese, 
based on the alpha colors that was selected for this set. <sighs> yeah. DCS Alps Pingmaster is something we need more of in the community. I mean, kind of, but not really, because Alps isn't really made anymore, as I from Matthias, but uh, we don't worry about that, really. I appreciate Alps sets where they are available, and I think they chose a good option for the influence and design of the set, so count me in. Extended 2048 first came to us in EPBT, but now it'll be available in MT3 this December on Drop. Will the sleek old school Apple Legends look okay on the rounded and scooped MT3 keycaps? We'll have to wait and see, but for me that's like the main consideration. Do I think that font will work with those keycaps? And also, I think every MT3 set should have a super homing kit, so that's a thing that I wish it would add. GMK Huhai is like the history of the Forbidden City of Beijing. Confusing. There's just too much going on with this set. I, I think double shot Chinese sub legends and even primary legends would be really, really cool, but not in this colorway. Especially not in this colorway. The disarray is a 65% board with a knob, despite being called a 70, it's like it just says disarray 70. The handle is unique and will turn this keyboard into a very versatile weapon. I mean, it's going to make it very portable. It's going to make it very portable. The Diamonds 65% is a board we don't have much info on. It looks okay, I suppose. Here are some pictures. Cat Extended APL has some cool inspiration that could work with the profile. You can't really go wrong with the colors chosen, even though they're nice and simple. I like both the Legends and the Sub-Legends, and if you don't get the APL Alphas, why are you even considering this set? Come on, the APL Alphas for this set or bust. Switch Mod, aka the Lube Goblin, will no longer be selling lube in the future due to market cir circumstances and the desire for some cooler upcoming projects. Best of luck to Krellbits. The ROTR Volume knob, knob features a knob for people who need to compensate. Also, I, I, I guess you can use it to control your volume. It's, uh, I guess it's something you can do with it, but you can also spin it. It goes left and it goes right. Formerly known as the Baka 60, the Squid 60 is a 60% that is simple and clean, and there's a Baka 60 behind me. I also want to say Chewy is an absolutely pleasant person, and y'all should check out Mechs on Deck if you haven't. Last in the rapid fire, Drop is selling recolored Gatorons at between 68.5 cents to 61.8 cents. So this is perhaps the most expensive Gatoron linear recolor I've seen to date. That's, that's like almost ink pricing. You just, you just pay a little bit more and get inks, or get to get inks at that price. Just get inks at that price. Well, that's it for this week in keyboards. Sorry, everyone, for the delay, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode. What do you guys think about the news today? Anything in particular catch your eye? Did I miss a topic worth mentioning? And hey, let me know all of your thoughts, as well as what you had for dinner in the comments down below. I've also released two other videos recently, one on the heavy grail and the history we took to get there as a community, as well as a Witch Switch episode on the Blueberry Switch. So consider looking through my channel and watching those if you haven't had a chance yet. And hey, you can consider subscribing. That helps out the channel a lot, making our way up the sub numbers. Thank you everyone so much, and I hope you keep on keyboarding. Let's try something new. Let's read some comments. From Robert Hill on my Witch Switch Blueberry. Great video, Huey, although I think your review does not address a key element of the cream family typing experience. Mainly, what does the Switch smell like? Unfortunately, it doesn't smell like blueberries, but fortunately, it doesn't smell like fish or a Chinese factory. So, I guess Mike has learned to air out the switches before sending them to us. From a chill man, this switch would have been great if it kept the cream spring and used something more similar to an MX Clear or Halo stem. Big agree. Big agree. It's definitely a unique switch for what it is because it's so different, but uh, I think it might be too different. Roderick asks, I'm a fan of the 67 gram Zeal V2s and drop HPs. Will I like this switch? I, I don't know. M maybe? It's not like either of those two switches. Um, but that doesn't mean you might like something different. But it is different. Uh, those aren't really, in my opinion, uh, comparisons. Joseph Aguilar says, Otemu U4 or Otemu Phoenix would be a fantastic ne next switch for which switch. Love the series, by the way. Thank you. And uh, I'm thinking Phoenix stems might be the next item for which switch. So we'll have to... We'll have to see. We'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Keith Olson on the Control F Heavy Grow video. 
Good info, I'm new to the Kiba obsession. I didn't realize the history of Topra or what the attractiveness or what might be the attractiveness of the HHKV. It sounds pretty nice. Please do more of these deep dives into the hobby. That's the plan. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should deep dive in or if I should just choose to shoot something. I have a few things rattling in my hand, in my head I could talk about. So expect to see more uh, Control F videos. Francis Usher asks, what is my quest? Well, in, in regards to the Heavy Grail, my quest is to make my HHKB the best HHKB I could ever make it. Well, well that's going to be it for the comments, but hey, I'll be reading comments in the next video or I mean from this video. So leave any comments down below, you know, what do you guys think of the news this week? What do you think is cool coming up? And what did you have for dinner? I want to hear what you had for dinner. Okay, what you, no do, do, what, what are you doing? Phone? Don't. Sorry. My phone just did a thing. Stop it, phone. Okay. Well, with that, uh, let's end this episode. Everyone, thank you so much for watching once again. And keep on keyboarding.